Hi guys. Good morning. Um, I'm going to try things a little bit differently this half term. Um, hopefully it'll make it a little bit easier for you guys at home. Um, I'm going to try my best to do um, a recorded video for the whole day. So everything will be in one place um, and you won't be scrolling through Dojo trying to find each activity. Um, it's just a bit of a trial to see if it makes it easier um, for parents, uh, carers at home to access. Um, however, we are still using the Dojo app. So any work that is done through these videos um, needs to be submitted um, the same way as you were doing before, either via message to me directly or um, on portfolios, taking photos um, of your worksheets or workbooks that you've done your work in. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to start with some phonics and then we're going to do some English, some maths, and then we've got a lovely activity to do um, this afternoon which is in relation to LGBTQ+, um, as it is History Month, but I will explain that um, later on in the video. So today we're going to start with some phonics. Okay, so I'm gonna share my screen with yours. Okay, so hopefully um, you can see me now up in the corner. You can also see um, our story that we are going to do today, which is called Sun Hat Fun. Okay, this is a red ditty book. Okay, so what we are going to do, what you can do at any time is pause the video if you need extra time, or if you need a break, you can just pause the video. Like I said, I'm just gonna do one video that's gonna run right through the whole day. So you can pause at any time. Um, and if you need any help, I'm, I'm going to still be at school. So you can just ring up um, and I will answer. Sim, I will always be on Dojo as well. Um, just message me on Dojo. Um, um, so yeah, uh, I'll be available and I'll take your calls and your messages. Um, so our Red Ditty book for Read Write Inc. this morning. Okay, the first thing we are going to do, so we're gonna have a look at that picture on the front. Sun hat fun. Hmm, I wonder what this story is going to be about. Hmm. Let's have a read. Okay, so what we are going to do first are our speedy sounds. Okay, so you can see them here. Let's have a, I can zoom in a little bit more. There we go. Let's have a read. So where my mouse is here, let's have a look. When my mouse is here, I want you to read with me the sound, okay? So we are writing, the, we are saying the sounds, not the letter names, okay? So, f, o, m, n, r, s, s, v, z, Ng, ng, b, k, 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 d, g, h, j, p, k, t, w, x, y, and ch. Okay, you can pause the video at any time now and you can read those sounds, okay, in, in the same order or you can read them out of order and test yourself. We are now going to go on to some nonsense words. So if you have a look at my screen now, there are four nonsense words. We're going to focus on these two here. Okay, first thing we're going to do, can we see any special friends in those words? I can, let's have a look. I found sh, eh, b, sh, eh, b, sheb. What nonsense. Let's have a look at this word here. Ch, special friend, ch, eh, d, ch, eh, d, ched. Ched, what nonsense. Okay, well done. So we're just going to focus on those two. 
But what you can do is you pause the video and you can have a go at these two as well if you would like. We are going to have a look at our ditty green words, which are these ones here. To sound out the separate sounds, okay? And then we are going to blend the sounds together, okay? D, had, a, h, a, t, hat. Now it's your turn. I'm going to point to them and you are going to sound them out for me. I blend together. Sun. Fun. It. On. And. Run. Well done. Once again, you can pause that video at any time and you can sound those out and you can blend them together in your own time. One red word for this story. Let's have a look at our ditty red word. So, can you read this word? Well done if you said put. Put. Okay, well done. Now we are going to go on to reading our story. Called Sun Hat Fun. This rhyming ditty is about a dad who has a special hat. Can you read this story? You can pause the video, okay, and read along these words. Well done. Remember, you can pause the video and read at your own pace. Okay, sun hat fun. Now I'm going to read the story for you. I want you to follow along. Dad had a hat, a sun hat, a fun hat, a put it on and run hat. Run, run, run. Okay, I've got a few questions to ask you. Let's see. Where do you think they are? Where do you think they are, this family? Have a think. Pause the video at any time and have and think of your answer. I think, looking at this picture here, a bucket and spade, I think maybe they might have been on a beach. What games do you think they could be playing if they are running on the beach. Have a think, pause the video. I thought of TIG, that's my favorite. Playing TIG on the beach, definitely lots of running. Right guys, we're gonna move on to our hold a sentence. So I have done our hold a sentence here. Dad had a sun hat. Okay, we are looking for three things in our sentence. First, we need a capital letter. Then we need our finger spaces and we need our full stop at the end. So focus on those three things when you are writing your sentence. Dad had a sun hat. Super, hopefully you've all got your sentence written in your book on your piece of paper at home. Now we're going to check if we have got our capital letters. At the beginning of a sentence, tick. We got our finger spaces, tick. And do we have our full stop at the end? Tick. Have we also got the right word, the right words and the right amount of words for our sentence? Dad had a sun hat. So we can give yourself another tick if we got all that right. 
that's okay if we didn't get it right. If we've got some mistakes, that's fine. We're just going to rewrite the sentence underneath, okay? So for anyone in the pink or the purple group, I would like you to extend your sentences, okay? So dad had a sun hat. Can you use adjectives maybe to describe the sun hat? Dad had a gigantic straw sun hat. Hi guys, so we're going to move on to some English now. I know we've been doing lots of work on Neil Armstrong and we've looked at it, the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. So we've got lots of things that we know, lots of facts that we know about Neil Armstrong and the moon already. So what we're going to look through today, and hopefully you can see on the screen, the Apollo 11 moon landing. So on the morning, of July 16th, 1969, the United States of America got ready to launch the, its Saturn V rocket from launch pad 39A at Cape Kennedy, Florida, USA. So if you have a look here, that is the rocket that went up into space. When Neil Armstrong was on it and stepped on the moon, that is the rocket. Three astronauts were on board, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins and Edwin Buzz Aldrin. The astronauts had to go through lots of training to move around their bulky spacesuits and test all the spacecraft equipment. Astronaut Michael Collins during a practice for Apollo 11. Astronaut Buzz Aldrin inspecting the Saturn V rocket. So those two are real pictures, photographs there of the astronauts. On July 20, 1969, Neil Armstrong became the first human to step on the moon. He and Buzz Aldrin walked around for three hours. They did experiments. They picked up bits of moon dirt and moon rocks and they put a US flag on the moon. They also left a sign on the moon. So here's a picture of, the, of um, Armstrong, and that's the flag there that he put on the moon. The Apollo 11 moon landing was the most watched event in history of television. Nearly 600 million people watched. Across the USA, people held moon parties, recorded their thoughts in letters, and took family photos. Nobody was going to forget the day the man, the first man walked on the moon. So if you have a look at these pictures here, look at all these people are watching the rocket take off. And then in this picture here, this is a photograph and photographs were sometimes in black and white in those days. And that's one of the moon parties that they had in America. So we are going to create our own newspaper. And I know that sounds a little bit tricky, but it's gonna be really fun. OK, I've done an example here of an idea that maybe you could use. OK, what we're going to do our newspaper article on is what we've just read about. OK, so the Apollo 11 and Neil Armstrong walking on the moon. We know lots of things about Neil Armstrong already. And you can always pause the video or rewind the video to read back through that PowerPoint. OK, so first thing we've got to do is we've got to think of a title for our newspaper. I've called mine Miss Presley Times. Okay, Miss Presley Times, that's the name of my newspaper. So you've got the Daily Mail, you've got the Times, you've got the Evening Courier, which are real newspapers that you can get from a shop. Okay, newspapers are non-fiction. Okay, so we have fiction and non-fiction. Okay. Fiction are stories that are made up, okay? So stories that we've looked at before that are made up. They are not real, they are from someone's imagination. Non-fiction, however, are facts, giving us real facts and information, okay? Just like a newspaper. So in our newspaper, you have written at the top your title. So Miss Presley Times is what I've called mine. And then you need a headline. A headline is something big and bold that if the newspaper was on a shelf, 
and you walked past and you saw it, man walks on the moon. Yeah, I'd definitely pick that newspaper up. I'd be like, whoa, a man walked on the moon. Yeah, I'll take that one. Okay, so you need to think of a headline. Man walks on the moon, man puts flag on the moon. Um, just use all the information that you know about the moon and Neil Armstrong that we've been learning about. Okay, so I have used man walks on the moon. What you can do is you can split your piece of paper. You can either have a blank piece of paper or if you've got a book, you can do it in your book, okay? We're in a newspaper, it's all information and all facts. So would you write, um, man walks on moon and has tea with an alien? <laughs> no, that's not real. So that can't go into your newspaper because it has to be facts and real information. Okay, so what I've done is I've started by drawing a little picture of the moon and Neil Armstrong, because he was the first man to walk on the moon. So that's how I've started my article. So I've done the title, then the headline, and then a picture. Okay, and I have labeled the picture Neil Armstrong. So I know who that is in that picture and anyone else that picks it up to read my newspaper knows that that is Neil Armstrong. We have got lots of space down this side and underneath here. So there are lots of things that you can write about, okay? So this is just an idea that you can use or you can come up with your own ideas. So I just want you to do the, the front page of your newspaper. So your title, the headline, your picture and the label, and then any information that you have learned from that PowerPoint. Then um, when, I ask, when you submit it, on Dojo, you could either take a picture of the work that you have done, or you can um, send it in to me at school, um, or upload it on Dojo or private message, whatever way is best for you, okay? Remember, when we are writing, we have our capital letters at the beginning of the sentences, our finger spaces, okay, and our full stops and correct punctuation. So year ones, I just want you to write your simple sentences, Okay, so what man walks on moon, that's perfect for you. Okay, year twos, I would like you to extend your sentences the best you can. Can you use conjunctions to join and extend those sentences like and, because, but? Can you use lots of different adjectives as well? Don't just talk about the moon. Can you describe the moon? Can you describe Neil Armstrong? Okay, so go into as much detail as you can, year twos. And year ones really push yourselves and make some fantastic sentences. And I can't wait to read all your newspaper articles. Hi guys, so we're gonna do some maths now. Um, I'm gonna go through a few questions on the year one worksheet and then a few questions on the year two worksheet. So if you're in year two, you don't have to sit through the year ones. You can just um, at the bottom, just scroll across to which part um, says um, year two, just scroll on a little bit so you don't have to listen to me um, go through the year one work. Um, first, I'm going to show you where I'm going to put the um, worksheets on Dojo. Um, I will go through a few questions, not all of them, and then you can access them on the Dojo and edit them um, either on your computer or if you're working in books at home, that's great. You can send me a photo either via message or post it onto your portfolios like you've been doing um, anyway. So as you can see here, this is um, Gazelle Classes Dojo page. So if you look down the side here, um, you have where the activities will be. So I will post, um, it will have the today's date on it and it will say maths and it will either say year one or year two. Um, so th that's where you can access the worksheets and edit them once I go through them with you. Right, so I'm gonna start with year one. So this is the point where year two is if you want, you can just scroll, scroll forwards and you don't have to um, go through, but it's always good to um, recap things that you already know. Complete the part whole model for each picture, okay? So we have the number 31 there. If you look at my cursor, then you can see there, the number 31. Okay. As you can see here, we have three tens, 10, 20, 30, and a one. 
10, 20, 30, 1, 31. Okay. So we now need to find the two parts that are going to go in here that make the whole. So if you have a look, we have three tens, 10, 20, 30. Okay. And we have a one. We have now split ours into three tens, so 30, and a one. So we now know 30 add one equals 31. So that is your first question that they are asking for. I'm gonna go and do one more question. This one is asking for you to show you're working how we know that this is correct. So just like we have done before, we need to draw, okay? So how many tens do we have here? Well done if you said four. So we're going to draw our four tens. So 10, 20, 30, and 40. Well done, 40, four tens. How many ones do we have? Well done, if you said two, we are going to draw our two ones. Okay, that is all the question is asking for, for you to show in that box here, your part whole model and how it has been worked out. So you have shown that there are four tens, which show that there's 40 and two ones. So we know 40 add two equals 42, okay? So when you submit your work, make sure you're putting it into on the dojo page, or you can um, take a photo of the work that you're doing in your textbook at home, and you can send that to me either via message or post it on your portfolios. Right, your twos. So what we are doing today um, is we are identifying different 2D and 3D shapes. Okay, so your first two pages on your worksheets are just matching the shapes to its names. Okay, so some of you might need a little help reading so your parents or carers can read um, the names which are down the right hand side. And then you can do the matching to the actual shape. So we can do one or two together. So again, there we go. So our first one says circle. Okay. Can you point to which one is the circle? Well done if you said that one, circle. Now we're gonna go onto the other page, this side, and we're going to have a look at some 3D shapes. So let's choose one. Pyramid. Can you point to what you think is the pyramid. Well done if you said that one, pyramid, okay. It says, which one is the odd one out? So which one is odd? Which one is different to them? Okay, so we're gonna have a look closely. Hmm. Let's have a look. I think there are a, a few different answers to this question. So let's have a look. First, the obvious is, why is this one the odd one out though? So we've got the first one is odd because it is a different color. Okay, so that is the first reason that we have circled that one because it is a different color. What other shape do you think is the odd one? Let's have a look. If you have a look, one, two, three sides, one, two, three sides, one, two, three sides, one, two, three sides. Okay, so they all have three sides. Straight sides, straight edges. 
straight after. What about this one? Oh, look at this line here. So I would circle this one. Why do we think we've circled that one? Because it has three sides. All of them have three sides. But that one does not have three straight sides, does it? Okay, does not have three straight sides. That is the reason why we have circled that one. Okay, so we've got that one because it's a different color, so that's obvious. Um, and this one because it does not have three straight sides. So we have chosen our odd one out. Okay. And we have explained why we chose our odd one out. So could you have a go at the one underneath? And just like the top one, there is more than one answer. Hi guys. So this afternoon, we've got a special activity called recipe for a special family. This is part of our LGBT plus history month. Um, LGBT plus stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and the plus is for um, others and how they may wish to identify. Um, as you can see, I've got the rainbow flag behind me and I've got my colorful garland on. Um, the rainbow flag is the symbol of hope and positivity and also a symbol of pride. Okay, so we're gonna start our story. Okay, families. Families come in all different shapes and sizes, but each one is very special. Every family is different. Each one is unique. Different families. Some families have more than one daddy. Some families have more than one mummy. Some families do not have a daddy. Some families do not have a mummy. Some children do not have a daddy or a mummy and they are looked after by another member of their family. Some children are looked after by another family. Talk about at home with your parents, carers, siblings, whoever's there with you, um, what makes your family special? So you can pause this video and just talk about what makes your family special. Okay. So hopefully you've just done some really good talking with everybody at home and um, what makes your family really special and there'll be lots of different answers. Okay, so today what we're going to do is we're going to write a recipe for a special family. Okay, so first mix in three tablespoons of kindness. Next, stir in two cups of sharing and caring. Then add four heaped teaspoons of trust. After that, add a bowl of fun. Finally, sprinkle in a pinch of laughter. Decorate with a whole ton of love. Okay, so it's not like a normal recipe, like you would use ingredients um, such as flour and sugar and milk and eggs. This is a special re recipe that we're going to write, okay? So you're going to write about your special family, okay? The words here on the side in bold, kindness, sharing and caring, trust, fun, laughter, love, all those words might differ in your family, okay? And you can use any type of words that you think um, would be better for your family. So you could put first, mix in three tablespoons of funny jokes. Maybe your dad tells lots of funny jokes. So you want three tablespoons of funny jokes. Okay, so here we've got a template that you can use. Okay, so can you make your own special recipe for a family? Okay, so you can fill in those gaps and choose which words you would like to use for your special recipe. Hi guys, so the last activity that I'm posting today is a whole school activity. Okay, so it just needs to be completed by the end of the week. Um, and it's to celebrate our LGBTQ um, plus history month um, and how everyone is unique. 
So decorate your rocks, which you can find either in your garden or if you've been out on daily exercise and you find a rock, um, that's great, you can take that home. Um, if you don't have the resources at home, um, there are always alternatives. You don't necessarily have to have paint and bright colours, um, like the example um, I've shown here. Um, I've just done a quick example here of just um, my unique rock. Without any paint or colours, it's still unique because it's different to everyone else's. We've just drawn some love hearts and some um, stars on this rock. Um, and also even a really small one that you find. I've just done some little dots on it. Okay, and that's still a very unique rock because it's different to everybody else's. Um, if you're really struggling for resources at all, then you can just message me on Dojo um, and I can arrange for you to come pick something up. Very limited resources that we can give you from school. Um, but just let me know on Dojo and I'll get back to you. So have fun, be creative, and I can't wait to see all your designs.